Floyd's final words on May 25, 2020 were, please, I can't breathe. And he said those words to Mr. Officer. He said those words to the defendant. The defendant is on trial not for being a police officer. That's not the state versus the police. He's not on trial for who he was. He's on trial for what he did. And he was convicted. Derek Chauvin, uh, convicted in state court, then also convicted in federal court, but chose and wanted to do his time in federal prison. That was very important to him. And we've seen this in other cases, like Alec Murdoch, really fighting uh, in the low country to try to serve his time in federal prison. Well, Chauvin was in federal prison in Tucson, Arizona, and Kenny Darr uh, from Scripps News Tucson has an update on what happened to Derek Chauvin in federal prison in Arizona. <laughs> One of Chauvin's lawyers, Greg Erickson, who represented him during his civil trial, releasing a statement. The statement calling out the prison for a lack of communication to both Chauvin's lawyers and his family. Erickson said in the statement that he has contacted the prison six times and that neither he nor Chauvin's family have been given an update on his condition by the prison. Erickson did go on to say that any updates have come from media reports and that the family does not know Chauvin's condition. Erickson calling it, quote, unacceptable and a lack of institutional control. Now, this all happened Friday afternoon around 1230 when employees at the prison responded to the incident, according to a statement from the Bureau of Prisons, which didn't directly name Chauvin in that statement. Now, no employees were hurt and Chauvin was later taken to a local hospital for further treatment and evaluation. Evaluation. Now, in a, in a statement from the press secretary of the Office of Attorney General in Minnesota to the AP, they did say they do expect Chauvin will survive. The FBI was also notified, and all visitation to the prison is currently suspended. So the man who murdered uh, George Floyd, someone attempts to take his life, but it appears uh, that he will survive. Here's more from uh, defense attorney uh, Gregory Erickson, who gave a statement on all this. As an outsider, and I view this lack of communication with his attorneys and family members as completely outrageous. It appears to be indicative of a poorly run facility and indicates how Derek's assault was allowed to happen. How the family members who are in charge of Derek's decisions regarding his personal medical care and his emergency contact were not informed after his stabbing further indicates the institution's poor procedure and lack of institutional control. Okay. What does this all mean? What happens next? Let's bring back in our think tank, Al Wunsch, Darnell Crossland, Jennifer Brandt with us. Uh, Jennifer, first, your reaction to, to this news. Wow. I mean, we hear about this from time to time, that these some infamous uh, prisoners are attacked in prison. And you certainly, certainly see it in the movie. So it's almost like this is, you know, the movie's coming to life. But um, just that this could happen and there's really lack of oversight at the prison, I think it's it's shocking. I mean, as much as people, you know, don't like him, still you expect that your safety will be secured when you're in the prison system. Um, and there was some breakdown uh, that allowed this to happen. So um, Darnell, what do you think happens next to, to Chauvin, right? If he's in the hospital now, may take some time to recover. We don't know exactly how serious it is. It, it appears his family doesn't even know at this point. Um, what happens next like after he recovers what do they do with him yeah absolutely so this is an easy one um but the first thing um everyone's thinking probably that it's 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 a racial thing like you know he he's he killed george floyd that was you know polarized the entire country the world um and yeah that's a bad thing but we got to remember even police officers who weren't in cases as as magnanimous as this one prisoners don't like police officers you know a lot of people are in prison because of police officers Nothing to do with the race. Um, so, oh, they're so in prison because they committed crimes too, right? <laughs> Sometimes. And they didn't. And them. they're in prison because they didn't hire you as their attorney. Exactly. Now we're talking. <laughs> and so, so what's going to happen here is he's going to make a motion to go to a camp. And um, when you go to a camp, you could then you really could relax. It's like uh, you know a financial crimes place where it's, you know there's no no gates even. You could even walk out, but people don't. So whatever he can do to benefit himself now, he probably stabbed himself. So now he can actually go to a camp. That was a little bit outrageous, but, you know. <laughs> Al, 
Um, I, I don't do, see that happening. Do, do you think, first of all, do you think it'll be solved? Uh, like, who did this? And do you think all of that will be made public at some point? No, I don't think it'll be solved. I don't think he's going to say anything. I mean, that, that federal um, correctional institution in Tucson, if I'm not mistaken, I believe is a medium security federal uh, facility. Um, so, you know, Darnell's right. I mean, cops are not like in prison. And there's also a good chance that the guards may be favoring him because he's a former police officer. So there is issues with regards to jealousy that goes on and an inherent hatred of police officers, especially, you know, with police officers in that kind of a situation where they're accessible by prisoners. But a medium security prison is probably the best he's going to get with the conviction that he has for violating civil rights and a violation of, of, of killing, you know, a, a individual. So I don't think he's going to the camp by any stretch of the imagination. I assume he will be put into a strict lockdown situation where he's going to probably be getting one hour of time a day where he'll be going out in a yard by himself and then 23 hours is going to be spent in his cell with limited access to uh, the different types of things, the library and other things based on availability. So I think that's what's going to happen on it. Um, I think it's terrible that his family doesn't have access to him and access to see what happened and if he's okay and everything along those lines, that's horrendous. And even though he is in prison and even though he did commit a crime and he was convicted of it, a murder. we have a prohibition. We have a prohibition against cruel and unusual punishment. And that's why he should be able to serve his time safely. Let him serve his time safely. Jennifer Brandt, what are your thoughts about the, the co-defendants who are doing time? Um, do you think they need to take some action or their representatives take some action here to potentially protect them? Or do you think this may turn out to be just the fact of being a police officer behind bars and there's no way around it? Well, I think with regard to the co-defendants, maybe it's more about just being a police officer behind bars. Because let's face it, he was the most notorious out of the group. I mean, he was the one that really represented all that happened and he was the focus of attention. So he's the most well-known. If anybody's a target for being who they are rather than just being a police officer, it's him. So, uh, you know, I think the normal precautions need to be taken because they are police officers, but I wouldn't say that anything more should be done or needs to be done. Um, obviously he, you know, they were looking for him and I think they did target him because of who he is. Maybe not a racial thing, but he's very well known and, you know, probably was hated by, by many of the prisoners there. So. All right, folks. We got more to get to up next.